Hello YouTube, welcome to another video from FS Pro and in today's video I wanted to talk you through a solution I found to a particularly irritating problem that I was having with EasyDoc. Look out for a review of EasyDoc coming soon. My um, history with it has been let's say patchy to say the best but to get back to the reason for today's video. I had found that when I wanted to try and set up a world camera in FSX Steam Edition I was facing quite a few problems uh, and as a result of trying to fix that I fired up the eska-config.exe file. When I did that though I discovered that I had a whole different problem that I needed to solve first. And today's video is a discussion of what that problem is or was and how to go about fixing it and by the way if you think you've got one fix for it don't be too happy too soon because you may need to apply a second one as well I'll explain what I mean shortly so here on the screen you can see at the moment the only thing I've done is copied across the shortcut for esca-config.exe one thing you want to do with this by the way it's not related to the problem but I found it to be a really good idea is to go to the properties for this onto the compatibility tab and on there click the run this program as an administrator I do this as well as having my UAC turned off here on Windows 7 just to make sure that I'm not going to hit any security or permissions issue with the work that I try to do so let's run up the ESCO config file I get a note here that I should have connected all of my joystick and uh, other external utilities which I have so let's go ahead I only have FSX Steam Edition installed on my PC I don't have the FSX box version and why um, Esker feels the need to present me a dialogue to ask me to choose from the one possible option I really don't know but let's go anyway I've got five SIM connects installed on my system apparently now I did install all five of those it's some other programs that have installed them and the most recent version of it this um, 0.61259 build here has been installed by Esca itself now again why it feels the need to tell me that it switched to this particular version I really don't know I guess if I'm being kind this is beta software and maybe these dialogues are shown so that if people uh, report errors to the writer of the software then he can get information from these dialogues that may prove useful in trying to understand what the problem is moving on so now I've come to the configuration file the first thing I'll mention down here is the user folder this is going to be handy and we'll need to use this in a moment and down here the sim folder as well make sure that's mapped to the correct location for where you have FSX installed so the first thing I tried to do here was very simply configure FSX files and when I run that everything seems to go fine wait for it though and there we are the root section exe.xml file has not been found and ESCO will not start automatically what this means is that EasyDoc won't show as an add-on when you've started FSX under the add-ons menu now if um, EasyDoc is the only add-on you've got your add-ons menu won't appear at all if it's an additional add-on then it may not appear under the add-ons menu certainly that's what happens most of the time not all of the time though and again I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment let's click OK for now you're invited to go and have a look at the tech support page which incidentally I've drilled through this stuff for hours uh, didn't find the answer there uh, carry on though and you'll find that the error comes up again near the end of the configuration and just click your OK uh, click OK to go through those as well finally we get a notification to say that we are done so apart from those two errors everything seems to have gone okay however I can tell you that this certainly didn't resolve any of the problems that I needed to get resolved and the first place to look is our exe.xml file that was reported in the error dialog now you'll find it 
here. So I'm going to go and pull my copy across now. Here it is. The first thing, first piece of advice I can give you about doing any work with your exe or XML file is please make a copy first because what we're about to do could really mess with your FSX install. And I really don't want you to do that and I certainly don't want to be responsible for it either. So right click on the file, uh, select copy and then just right click anywhere and select paste or better still unclick that file, right click and select paste and you'll have an automatic exe copied or xml file put into your folder. Good stuff. Back to the exe.xml file, right click and now we need to select the program that we want to edit the exe.xml file with. It's important that we choose the right editor for this. If we choose the wrong one it's going to be saved in a format that just isn't going to be readable by FSX or indeed EasyDoc. And the right application for us is the rather wonderful notepad, much maligned but very necessary in Windows. So let's take a look here at my exe.xml file. A really common problem with this and one that's happened by the tens of hundreds, if not the thousands of people who use Active Sky Next, which includes me, is that this XML file has become corrupted. And the way in which I know that is that the second line for the XML file reads as shown here, so that's correct. And there should be a closing tag for simbase.document at the very end of the XML file. And as you can see, there's nothing here. That's because it got mangled with update 2 for Active Sky Next. So what I'm going to do now is to copy this section out and put it where it belongs. So if I highlight all of it, I should be able to right click and cut. Come down to the end and paste. I'm just going to delete the empty line so I've now got a continuous XML file. The format here for all of the add-ons that you have that might show in FSX is indicated here. So we have a launch.addon section followed by the name of the add-on whether it's enabled or not. So in this case we have a double negative where disabled is false meaning that it's active. Uh, the path to where the exe file is that gets used and then the closing tag for the add-on. Same down here for Active Sky Next. I have the name, the disabled false configuration again and the path to where the exe is. Okay so this is now a properly formatted exe.xml file. What I'm going to do is just save that and now I should be able to run the uh, EasyDoc camera add-on again, so let's close it down. So here I am trying to run the config again and we're hopeful that this time it might work, but suspend belief. So here we go through, you might remember it was five lines in before we got the error message and bang! The root section in the exe.xml file is not found again. So OK, we'll just work our way through this. We'll get to the end of the configuration and take a look at the XML file again. So here we are. I'll open up the XML file with Notepad again. And as you can see, everything here looks like well-formed XML. That isn't the problem. I, I tried, I worked with this. I tried stripping out the add-on uh, here. I tried stripping out EasyDoc and then putting them in one by one to find where the error was, but it just constantly errored and I couldn't see what was wrong with it for the life of me. And then somewhere on a forum somewhere, I read a piece of advice. I thought, well, that can't possibly be true here, but let's take a look. And I discovered that lo and behold, this is what the error was after all. And it's this. 
even though we're using Notepad and we're using a basic text file, we still have to make sure that it's saved in the correct format. And here's how we do that. So from the file menu, select Save As. It's just going to save it with the same name that we want to save as, but check the encoding section here. Now somehow or other, this encoding has ended up on my PC as UTF-8, and that's as much use to us as a handbrake in a canoe. So drop this down and select ANSI as the encoding standard, and then click Save. Yes, I want to replace it. Close that file down. Let me just move this out the way quickly. And let's try running the config file again. So this time, fingers crossed, I'm hoping we're going to be OK. So the configuration runs through. It's after five lines that we got the error. And nope, we're looking good. So to recap then, the changes that you need to make if you come across the error is to firstly check that your XML is well formed and here's an example of well formed XML for that file and secondly to ensure that if you make any changes that you save it in the correct format with the correct encoding which should be ANSI encoding. I hope this helps somebody um, I've wasted hours this weekend trying to get around this problem and when I look at it now I think well how simple uh, that's so easy to do but sometimes the hardest part of course is the investigation and the simplest part is applying the fix. I hope it's useful to you thanks for watching and until next time see you then.